Trust is vital when you're in another country. If you want to buy a home, set up business relationships, or apply for a residence permit, you need to be able to count on the best independent legal aid. Peggy Fair and Aredia is an international firm of lawyers with over 20 years' experience and one single aim for you to live at ease in Spain. In order to give you a clear, streamlined, and fast response, we work with a cross disciplinary team of professionals specializing in the main legal fields civil law, foreigners' affairs, business law, tax and financial law. And international law. And to ensure that you're kept informed and up to date with everything, we have six offices on the Eastern Coast. Whether you're from here or abroad, we will always stand by you and speak your language. Our relationship is based on openness, professionalism, and a commitment to finding legal solutions in your best interests and for your peace of mind. Ayether and Aredia, international lawyers. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today on this webinar that we're going to talk today about taxes, scenarios, and immigration. Because a lot of you are always asking personally all these possible scenarios where you are with a visa and you probably want to do tax planning as well. Well, thank you very much as well for all the questions you've sent us. It, it helped us um, understanding what are your problems and hopefully we'll be able to answer to all of you. Today, we're gonna to talk about tax and immigration. And um, please start sending us your questions, which a lot of people you did, but now we're gonna start running through it. So please feel free. Uh, to start doing it now. I'm going to introduce you in the panel. We've got Pedro. Pedro, can you hear? I can hear you, Ignacio. Good afternoon. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Well, uh, we are missing today Michael Davis. He's busy, very busy on this short uh, week, and he apologized for not joining us. He promised he will try next time. So we're going to try to cover that. Pedro, myself, and we're going to have on the team uh, we're going to have our tax advisor, Guillermo, as well, coming on the immigration and the Stephanie, which will be trying to respond and help us to process all your questions. This webinar is going to take one hour of our time. Uh, feel free to watch any other webinars that we have because we've been, been covering a lot of issues and uh, probably we might not have enough time today to run through everything, but I find them very useful, especially for you when you are in another country. I'm going to pass over to Pedro, who we will start talking very briefly about the type of visas that most of the experts uh, are requesting nowadays. Over to you, Pedro. Okay, Ignacio. Well, we, as we know, we have received like, uh, I would say, hundreds probably in the last year um, of um, questions regarding immigration. Um, and obviously, we always um, inform about the tax situation, the tax scenario when someone becomes resident. Obviously, uh, when we explain the, 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 the path in order to go to this kind of visa or, the, or, the, uh, or a, a different kind of visa, what a strategy to start, obviously taxes, tax scenario, tax uh, questions, I mean, implications and consequences that arises when someone becomes resident um, are important to prevent and are important to understand. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ignacio, uh, we, um, we always insist on that when someone wants to relocate. Obviously, we have many questions. I have read just a few minutes ago that we have many questions that people had already lived in Spain. So it is something that we cannot prevent. We, just, uh, we are going to inform them and we will inform everyone which is joining us and, and, and listening to us. But obviously, it's, it's important to prevent, to plan when someone is going to come, what kind of immigration uh, um, um, a route or path is going to take, and what will be the, the taxes and consequences. Okay, well, um, normally with, uh, I, I normally explain when, in, when I try to explain at the beginning, there's a basic rules uh, about immigration. I'd say that there are different kind of queues. There's like two queues. One queue is for European Union citizens. And the other one is for non-European Union citizens. For European Union citizens, it's like kind of a very soft and flexible, obviously needs to be applied. The residency in Spain with some requirements that are, 
I would say, uh, um, um, very uh, flexible, or should say, like soft, soft, in a way that the financial means are um, not too much, um, and uh, the requirements regarding insurance probably is the same. But there are some other documents that are not really needed, as if we are in a different queue as non-European Union citizen. So. European Union citizens are allowed to um, be residents in Spain with some financial means and when uh, having access to the health system, private or public system. Having said that, uh, they will be allowed to resi be resident in Spain and work in Spain. Mm -hmm. So many of you probably have listened about this nomad visa, this new visa that is going to be approved in a few weeks, I would say a few months, probably. And we'll, um, well, we'll, we'll, Will be a, uh, we understand it's gonna be a very attractive uh, visa in the future, but let's see what it finally says and what, let's see what is finally going to be embedded. I will be focusing, Ignacio, in two uh, visa that I understand many of the third countries, non-European union countries are at this time um, looking for and um, checking and getting information about it. When, uh, one of them is the non-lucrative non visa, the non-working visa, and the other one is the golden visa, okay? And we will be explaining a little bit about what are consequences on, 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 on taxes. Now look at the visa, is a, a visa that you are not allowed to work. And you, many of you, I'm sure that you, many of you have read in many website, websites, okay, well, am I allowed to work in Spain? Well, the rule is not, not allowed to work at all. But obviously, there are some resolutions by judges in order to say, well, you authorize to work from uh, employment or employee outside of Spain and not to employment in Spain. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the financial means that you need to uh, uh, show a proof needs to be um, as a minimum requirement, as a minimum financial means that you need to show that you have enough money to live in Spain without working. So in case that you don't work, in case that you don't have an employment, you don't need to work. You, don't, you have enough money to live in Spain. So this is one of the first requirements, financial means. How do I prove financial means? Bank statements for the last six months. Okay, and any investment, any uh, saving, any bank account, any like pension that you may get in order to guarantee, in order to show that you have enough money to live in Spain without working. That's the key. And the other key is that you have to have access. Imagine that you show an investment that you have, uh, let's say plenty of money, and uh, but you have to show that or proof or um, give the arguments that you have access to that money whenever you require, whenever you may need it. Mm -hmm. So one of the first requirements for the non-working visa is obviously the financial means. You have to have enough money to live in Spain. You do not need to invest in Spain. You do not need to buy a property in Spain, for example. You just need to have a place to live in Spain, like a, a place to, um, you may rent a property in Spain in order to live in Spain, obviously. So non-working visa financial means. Obviously there are some other requirements that are important and I will always say criminal records uh, for the last five years in your home country. You, but you've been living in the, your country in the last five years. So we need a criminal record from uh, that country uh, that covers the last five years. If you have been living in, a, in, in that country or two different countries in the last five years, then we may require, we will require these two criminal records for those 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 two countries. Criminal records, financial means, and the other one is you need to show that you have access to the health system in Spain. Normally to start, it is recommended to do it with a private insurance policy that covers hospitalization and without any co-payment. Mm -hmm. That's important. So, um, and that will cover for one year because the authorization to be resident in Spain is for one year to start. And um, well, yes, this is the basics. I mean, financial means, criminal records, um, uh, health uh, uh, policy, private or, or maybe public if you have the right to do it. And th there are other requirements like, uh, well, obviously the passport, copy of the passport, uh, medical certification, which shows that you don't have any big illness in order to not to be able to enter in Spain and expand, for example, some virus. And uh, well, that are the requirements that you will be able to be authorized in Spain for one year, and then you will be able to renew it for a couple of years, and then a couple of years more, and then five years. So the timing will be one plus two plus two plus five years. Mm -hmm. And 
Uh, where do I have to apply the non-lucrative visa? Well, in the Spanish consulate in your home country where you are resident in. If you are resident, for example, in the United States, there are different Spanish consulates, or in UK, there are uh, different Spanish consulates to the one who belongs the, to the place that you are resident. Mm -hmm. And well, needs to be attached, needs to apply an appointment, needs to be attached all the documents, and documents do not have to be older than three months. Mm -hmm. And if you are a couple, you need to have you bring also your marriage certificate, duly legalized, with the HAPA still of a Hague Convention and duly translated. All documents need to be at the end translated into Spanish. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a must. Mm -hmm. Okay. And those ones who are public documents, let's say criminal records and, for example, a marriage certificate, or in case that you may bring also your children, which is a birth certificate, also needed, those documents which are public documents need to be um, duly legalized by the Hague Convention. If your country where you are do not have this Hague Convention um, um, signed, if your country has not signed this convention, they will have to be legalized with a different complex uh, situation with a with a foreign minister but that normally all the countries most of the countries uh, uh have a signature with the with the Hague convention okay well having said that ignacio this is um, uh, the basics of a non lucrative visa but once you live in spain for one year then you need to renew and that's the important key you need to renew i mean before the, the deadline is 60 days before you need to make all the process in order to renew and bring all the documents, which is gonna be more or less the same documents except the criminal records. Mm -hmm. And then uh, obviously, once you have been living in Spain for one year, you will be authorized in case if you fulfill the all the requirements for another two years. That year, normally, you will be uh, living in Spain more than 180 days, okay? Because you are resident in Spain and we thought that you will not get the residency because uh, if you don't show that you have been living half of a year from the period of time that you got the residency until the period of time you have a deadline to renew it, you will not get the residency or the rene renewal of the residency until you show that you have been living at least half of a year. So you will become tax resident mm, in, a, in a Spain, but the, the dates are different from the renewal, from the deadline that, that you have to renew, the, the, the time that you become resident in Spain. Well, but basically, to whenever when someone becomes resident in Spain is whenever some, some someone gets the visa from the Spanish consulate and comes to Spain and land into Spain. Mm -hmm. And after that, you apply for an appointment and you get the identification card. And the date that you start being resident is the date that you enter in Spain physically. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, well, the non-nuclear visa at the end is um, you have the obligation to be a resident in order to renew. So you have the obligation, you will be, ta you will be a tax resident in Spain, mm -hmm. basically. And obviously you live in Spain from 1st of January to 31st of December, more than 180 days. And we will be answering some questions about, about that. If you live more than 180 days, then you become tax resident mm -hmm. and you have to fulfill the requirements. You have to declare all your worldwide income in Spain and obviously, according to double taxation treaties, you will have to pay or not pay or pay something in, in some country and then deduct it or get a credit, uh, pay in Spain and then get a credit. For example, it happens a lot with the US uh, citizens. And in order, to, obviously, what we, we do in the law firm is obviously just to check all the double taxation treaties in order to you not know, to pay double and check where it has to be paid uh, because tax authorities in Spain are, um, 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 how to say, very, very, uh, um, very, very restricted, I have to say. Mm -hmm. And um, well, uh, Ignacio, um, I think that for the non-working visa, I think it's well, more or less explained. Obviously, we will be answering the questions, but let's go through the golden visa right now. Golden visa is an investment visa. 95% mm -hmm. of the investment visa are because someone has invested in property. Minimum investment, 500,000 euros. You can invest in one property or 10 properties, but at least all the properties together, you invest at a minimum 500,000 euros. Any property from, let's say, 29th of September 2013, and um, from that date, anyone has bought a property could be included into the Golden Visa application. 
Uh, can I apply for a mortgage? Yes, but the mortgage, um, you, at the end, you have to show that you have invested at least 500,000 euros. For example, a uh, property of 1 million euros that you apply for a mortgage of 500,000 euros. Perfect, because you have already invested 500,000 euros from your pocket. Okay, gold and visa, the requirements really financial means, criminal records uh, are exactly the same as a non-working visa. And um, you can apply when you buy the property, you can apply the golden visa once you are in Spain, physically or in the Spanish consulate. And the period of time is different. Um, you will get, if you are physically in Spain, will be for two years and then five years. If you apply when you are in the Spanish consulate, it will be for one year and then you will have to renew it for a couple of years. The key point also for renewal is that the key point is not that you have to live in Spain as a resident, is that you need to maintain the investment. And when I say maintain the investment, it does not mean that you cannot sell the property. For example, in this case, you can sell the property and buy another one. You can sell the property and invest in buying deposits. That's not that's not a problem. At least that you uh, maintain an investment that fulfill require fulfill all the requirements of the golden visa. Okay, uh, golden visa. We we receive many questions regarding. Uh, well, if uh, I, I will apply for golden visa, so I will not have to pay taxes in Spain. That's wrong. That's false. Mm -hmm. If you live in Spain more than 183 days, we are going to insist on that. Mm -hmm. If you live in Spain more, this is a general rule, uh, more than 183 days, then you become tax resident. For the golden visa, you can live one day or you can live 365 days. That's not, that's not an issue. But if you live more than 183 days, then you become tax resident. Okay, we will be answering and, and give more information about that. Um, regarding the normal visa, I don't want to extend. It's a new visa that is going to uh, cover uh, for uh, limbo that we are right now. The people is with the non-working visa, as we said before, but is working uh, for employ as employee of uh, um, uh, companies outside of Spain. So it's going to be like uh, working with the, with the computer. And uh, well, uh, at the end, we are, I don't want to enter. It's going to be approved in a, in a few in a few weeks or months. We will have a special webinar for that, in order to help people, in order to apply for that, because we have received a lot of questions about that. But it will be. It looks like it's going to be like very attractive for taxes. You will be getting some uh, visa and authorization to be resident in Spain. Um, and uh, well, it looks like it's going to be for five years. Probably it's going to be extended more, as I've read. And um, it's like a become law, you know, that it's going to be uh, very attractive on, on, on taxes, but not just 24%, uh, for example, for third countries as a non-resident, it will be reduced to 15% of your income, which is quite good. Okay, but, um, and then Ignacio, we have another uh, visa, which is, I mean, we, there are different ones, but another one, which is normally, a, uh, we receive in, in questions is the self-employment visa. Well, self-employment visa at the end is you create a, you want to get a visa residency in Spain because you want to start business, self-employment. Mm -hmm. Also, obviously, by uh, you can be contract in, uh, as an employee for a company in Spain, and you will get the residency in Spain for sure. But let's focus on the self-employment, which is normally a little bit more complex. A self-employment visa, at the end, you need to prepare a project, a business project, in order to show the Spanish authorities that you have a capability because you are a professional on that specific field, mm -hmm. and you have a financial means in order to cover that that situation about this business. So the business plan is a must, and it is extremely important to have it well done in order to show authorities that you have enough skills, enough capability, and you have enough grounds in order to show that the business in some way will go well. It doesn't have to, but it will. you have to show that it will go well. And you have a financial means in order to show that you will be covering at the beginning the cost of that business at the beginning. And uh, the process of getting it will be more or less the same as the non lucrative visa. Once you make application, I don't know if I explained that before, you will be able to receive an answer in three months time, which normally you receive. If you don't receive, it looks like it's, it's, it's like you are rejected. In three months time, then you have a month to obtain a visa. Once you obtain a visa, in this case, you have to, um, it, it, in this case it's different, is a resolution, then you have to apply to obtain the visa one month again, and then you, you will have authorization to enter in Spain in the following 90 days. So it takes time to take it, to get this. Mm -hmm. Okay, Ignacio, um, I think that we should now, I mean, all the- Shall we start? Yeah, shall we start, so, Pedro? We have hundreds and hundreds of questions. Oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> so I think we're gonna go straight to the point. Uh, we're gonna okay. be a little bit speedy. 
but because a lot of them repeat themselves as well, Pedro. Okay. Uh, uh, Pedro did comment about the type of visa, and I know a lot of you are worried and need to understand a lot about tax planning. I always encourage you to do tax planning ahead before you even come to Spain. But if you, by any reason, you didn't do it, we could always do tax planning through a video conference or personally. Here we have a lot of questions on that. And um, just basically, because I consider you will save a lot of money doing tax planning. That's the best interest for you. Okay, Pedro, shall we start cracking, get cracking yeah. here with the, the questions? I know Guillermo, Stephanie and Carmen are here uh, trying to catch up with everything so, so we could answer. Right. Um, I think um, let's, let's start with the very beginning by the order. I think we have, um, hello, Eric. Eric is, is obviously um, uh, a friend as well. He's asking, uh, are there any plans for the Spanish tax authorities to increase the personal tax allowances? Are there any plans to make the taxation system more fair and equitable in terms of how they apply the rate bans in conjunction with the personal tax allowance? Um, unfortunately, uh, I don't see this happening this year, Eric, but you never know what is going to happen the following year. I know a lot of you have been asking questions about uh, wealth tax, uh, income tax, and uh, like in different regions, as Michael stated in different, different webinars, are exempt like Madrid and Andalusia, which they were in at the time. Now in Alicante, well, in Costa Blanca, right, there is a wealth tax. I encourage you to do tax planning because sometimes it's a bit worrying, but probably doesn't even apply to you, or probably is not that high tax on top of the income tax, okay? So uh, I just ask you not to panic, uh, but just to do tax uh, planning. If you have over 500,000 euros, plus your personal house, which will go over 300,000 euros allowance per person. So that will be with regards to wealth tax. In Costa Blanca, you need to do tax planning if you have more than 500,000 euros spare money. And if your property, your 50% share property is over 300,000 euros, then you are obliged to do the wealth tax. Okay, but that only happens if you're staying in Spain more than 183 days and if you're fiscal resident in Spain according to the dual taxation treaty between Spain and your home country. Okay, so that's key. A lot of question, Pedro, we have as well about if they arrive after the 1st of July, um, then obviously they get their TIE, their residency, whether they've got their non-lucrative visa, the golden visa or whatever. But that year, they will spend less than six months and therefore they will be non-tax residents in Spain. I encourage you to do all the tax planning before, if you're planning to sell before, if it's more efficient to do in your own country, do it before becoming resident in Spain. The fact of you becoming resident in Spain doesn't mean you're going to stay resident forever. You could always go back to a non-resident tax scenario and always keep with you all the evidence about the days that you've been in Spain, the uh, certificates, which I always encourage you to apply in your home country, that you're a fiscal resident according to the dual taxation treaty in your home country. And they're trying to keep everything in a file just in case you need to prove your status. A lot of you guys come over and say you didn't get your stamp. Uh, it's not that easy to get the stamps while always trying to seek a police station at the airport if by any reason they ask you to move because there is a big queue and they don't stamp your passport for these tax purposes, reasons, etc. trying to seek your the police station at the airport. Don't live without that because that will bring issues eventually um, to get your uh, fingerprint and um, to get a TIE card. Pedro, let's move on because it keeps growing and growing. Okay, let's let's get right. You, you read and, uh, and yeah, you right. Sh show um, me where, where the question is so I can read it also. Yeah, um, I, I'm here in the chat. Um, I'm, okay. I'm in the chat with the Stephanie here. I will do okay. my empadronamiento in Madrid, but I plan to travel all around Spain. The consulate that issued my visa advised me that this would not be a problem, and it is okay if the address that I give for the empadronamiento is a temporary one. Is that true? Okay. Um, right. In order to 
to, to register. Padron means to register at the town hall. And then you have to have a rental contract or an authorization from the landlord uh, to live in that property for at least one year. They're not gonna allow you with the Airbnb uh, properties without proper consent from the landlord, okay? It's like you're living in a hotel and then getting Padron, you wouldn't get Padron registered in a hotel. Okay, that's exactly it. Um, right, so for your TIE residency, you need to be registered at the town hall of the community town hall that you wish to stay, okay? Um, so I don't see a problem for you to travel around, but you need to register in the pack. Yeah, Padron, I mean, and many, many of the, many of the um, Padron offices, obviously they, were, they require like a, a minimum, uh, it's like a, a rental contract of a minimum one year with that authorization that you're saying. So be aware of where you are going to apply for Padron, and and but obviously it's something that is is uh, is important to get it, obviously. And um, obviously, uh, once you get it, obviously you will be able to travel around and change your address, change the domicile, and you will have to stay in the Padron in a different place. But it's something that is is important to get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we have another one that says I'm in Spain on a golden visa for years 2021 and 2022. I'm a tax resident here. For 2023, I want to change to a non-resident tax purposes, for tax purposes. What is the requirement to do um, this other than being in Spain less than 183 days? Is any notification of this required to be reported to the tax authority? Um, right, it's just to give you a very brief line here, Bill, um, basically it's, it's hard to, to to be so so accurate with the dates, I know. Um, what you need to understand is you always have a dual taxation treaty, that's the number one thing. And there is a general rule that if you spend more than 183 days in Spain, you are, you are considered to be tax resident in Spain. Now, if you want to deregister for, for 2023, right, it's not a problem as long as you stay less than six months, less than 183, or according to the dual taxation treaty, you are qualifying another country. So you will have to do the tax uh, declaration in your home country or the country where you decide to reside on. And you will have to do the non-resident in Spain. In Spain, talking to a tax authority is, is self-assessment. So you will need to report and inform the tax authorities. And I encourage you, Bill, to have all paperwork in a yeah. file just in case they always ask that's, you for this. That, that's important and it, as, this is as a general rule. Imagine that, let's, let's put in imagine, uh, imagine that uh, someone says, well, I will be living in Spain 175 days. So I don't, do not fulfill the requirements to be rest in Spain. And f uh, for that reason, I'm not tax resident as, as many lawyers uh, tax advisors says. But imagine that person is living in Italy one month and in France another month and then goes to Portugal another two months and then goes to Ireland and, and then do not fulfill the requirements to be resident in any country. Hmm? Then Spain will consider you, will consider you as a resident in Spain and will have to worldwide uh, declare your income in Spain and pay tax accordingly. Mm -hmm. So right. it is important, as Ignatius said, it's important that uh, you fulfill requirements at least for one country that you are resident accordingly to the rules and obviously you are tax resident in that country where you fulfill the requirements and you accordingly pay taxes or you do not but I can only fulfill the requirements to be resident and tax resident in that country. Why do we say that? Because tax office may sometimes informs and sends some letters saying, we understand that you are resident in Spain and you are tax resident in Spain. And one of the key points in order to argue and defend that, that letter is bringing a tax certification from your country where you are resident and saying that you are tax resident in that country and you fulfill the requirements as a tax resident. And that will stop and reject any argument from tax office in Spain. But Pedro, we have a question. I know it probably is not, it's not easy to be quick here, but Steve is asking about a working visa as well. Mm -hmm. um, Guillermo just quote it there. And um, basically he's got questions about the work visa. I don't know if you wanna just, I, th I think you, you mentioned quickly uh, but uh, Steve, if you need to know the requirements for the working visa, you could email us 
and we can send you the list of documents. It's not, it's not an easy one, it's a complex one. Um, but as Pedro stated, um, Pedro, uh, can, can, I, can I see the, can I see, can can I see the question? See I can I don't see the question in the. Yeah, if you go hundreds. into Teams, Pedro, if yeah. you go into Teams. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, Four thirty-eight. Okay. Let me let me ask okay, you. Steve. And then um, he's asking as well. Um, what are my my obligation with regards to the tax and social security payment? I think it, it, it is difficult now to to run oh, through okay. everything. Okay. I mean, it's it's but a little complex. To... Uh, Obviously, there's someone that wants to, is this question, someone who wants to start a company in Spain, in this case, in Alicante, where we are based. No, but and he already has a business partner based in Alicante. He already has a business, obviously. Um, and they already have an SL company. Yeah. Both well, working that, as administrators. That, yeah, that's that's also, I mean, obviously, it's a little bit complex to explain and all the requirements. We can send a, a letter, I mean, yes, send us an email, Steve, and we will tell you which are the requirements to, to get it. But obviously, he has already started and uh, the initial uh, setting up um, on a, of the documents, um, well, well, it says we will be operating. It has not been started. Mm. So at the end, um, well, um, we can we, we can organize uh, a video conference, uh, uh, Steve. Just to as discuss. we said, it's extremely important that to create a business that shows and proof, and in order to uh, be uh, determined that the business is going to happen, it has a. a a good track in order to, you have financial means to cover that and you have ability that you're gonna, uh, in order to do that kind of work. Mm -hmm. That's extremely mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, but, but basically, there are, there are, Pedro, yeah. mm -hmm. Pedro, basically the bottom line, he needs a work visa, number one. He mm -hmm. needs to pay social security and he needs to pay taxes in Spain. That's Absolutely. the bottom line. Absolutely, I mean, actually, social security is, uh, I mean, uh, even though as a director, you have to fulfill the requirements of a social security. And that's, that's uh, obviously, it's, uh, it's one of the, one of obligations as uh, as 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 being self employment in Spain. Steve, even though you, you do it, even though you do it with a limited company. Hmm? Yeah, Steve will need an accountant to run through everything, uh, the business. But I know this this is not an easy thing. I mean, I'm happy to organize a video conference uh, on a base one to one yeah, basis. It is, uh, yeah, obviously. I mean, if uh, someone like uh, this kind of uh, business can be a director, also can be an employee, and also we have to fulfill the requirements as an employee. And the company will have to pay social security. Well, this obviously is, is a little bit complex, and it takes a little bit more time. And regarding, I don't know, Steve, is you are thinking about bringing your family or not? That's another issue, uh, different because mm -hmm. it's, you do not do not do not fit with this also. And um, well, let's, Steve, uh, if you uh, please send us an email, and, and we will happy we will be happy to to give to uh, have a conversation with you, a video conference with you in order to, to assist you. And we will be sending you the requirements uh, on writing. Yeah. Right, uh, okay. then let's move on, Pedro. We're running, uh, running through it. Um, I think we've got one, um, says my international flight enter, enter the EU in Frankfurt. And, I'm, and I have an immigration uh, stamp from Frankfurt airport and no stamp okay. for mm -hmm. entering Spain. What would I do? Pedro, would you want to go for it? Yeah, I mean, uh, if 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 it's not a stamp, what we recommend always, you know, that to be a stamp, the passport is uh, to go to a police uh, to. station, huh? a police station. Yeah. You know, that in the following With, hours, in the following yeah. days, we, we normally say before, once you land in Spain, once you're entering Spain, before 72 hours. Huh? Right. I, I okay. encourage them, Pedro, to go to the police station in the yeah. airport. Don't leave the airport without the stamp. Yeah. That, that, because otherwise it's going to be the never ending story and, and, and it's difficult. I, I yeah. tried to arrange an appointment at the police station, but they wouldn't accept you. Yeah. Because in the police station, you have to show that you have entry in Spain because of that uh, book f flights and you have to show more things just to say, I entered two days ago. But obviously if it's in the airport, perfect. But if it's, it cannot because of any reason, you will be have, um, we, we encourage and recommend you to do it before 72 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's right. go for four. Let's go. One. It says my non lucrative visa in my passport shows an NI number that starts with Z. Is that normal, Pedro? Yeah, it's not a problem. With this it's not, letter, it's, it's not usual. Then X and Y is normally start with that, but also with Z. Mm -hmm. No right. problem. Mm, right. With this letter change after, would this letter change after in Pedro? Pedro? No, I mean, uh, with this, this, this number will not change. That is an identification number and will not be changing because of right. empoderment. No. 
Right. Okay. Right. Let's move on. Um, right. We've got here another one. Uh, would you like to pick the one, uh, Pedro, now? Um, okay. Right, well, people are worried about the Spanish taxes. So let, me read, let, me read to, let me read it to you, Ignacio, the following one. What I think is the following one. It says, my biggest concern is the impact of paying taxes on my social security and investment income. Um, I think the name is Saul. Um, my goal is in moving to Spain, to Valencia in this case, uh, near, near where we are um, based, was to use social security for day-to-day -day living and to retain the remaining assets for family gathering and other optional expenses. It will be the most useful to me to hear how the taxes will be calculated and whether I will receive credit from US taxes paid, whether the US gives credit for Spanish taxes paid. Right. Uh, well, so, uh, Ignacio, yes, right. that's a question that we receive a lot um, in, in, in many, right. many points. Right. right, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, I think you pronounce Saul in Spanish. I don't know if in English Saul. you pronounce it that way. <laughs> yeah, so. right, So I don't know. Um, I don't know. Right. Uh, anyway, it depends on your income that you receive, right? But bear in mind that the Social Security is taxed in the U.S. because this the, the income comes from the U.S. and is taxed as well according to your tax treaty, taxation treaty in Spain. So it's taxable in both countries, but you will never pay double, right? So if it has to be taxed in Spain in the U.S., it will be deducted in Spain. Okay, um, the, the profit from the investment depends on the type of product. Uh, but in general, um, right, uh, they will have to avoid the dual taxation, okay? So my answer to what I would do here, so, is to do simulations of possible less scenarios. It's very hard for us and for, for lawyers and for accountants to, to give the right answer to you specific a scenario, I encourage you, which actually we've done this morning as well to one of your colleagues here. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm so happy many times because um, they, they get relief, right? When they know the answers and, and the amount of stress you take it out. So my, my recommendation is if you're gonna do a simulation to know exactly how it works and what will you expect, I always encourage you guys to organize a, a video conference, do a simulation, send us all the details, exactly how the S scenario for the next year is gonna come. And then we will work out with our accountants, how much tax and how would it work on the dual taxation treaty? And you'll have the answer to that specific question. I think that's very useful and, and, and it takes your worry away. Okay, exactly. so, exactly. right. But I will send you some links here for the dual taxation treaty. If you go into our website, click taxes, in Spain and um, trying to seek dual taxation treaty between US and Spain. I will, I will text it now uh, so you can have it in your, in your computer now. Right, let's move on, Pedro. Oh, okay, um, let's go. Um, following question, I mean, let's go rapid uh, this time. Yeah. A consulate that issued my visa told me that I did not have to provide them with a police certificate before issuing my visa. Do you think the authorities of Madrid will ask to see the police certificate when I do the empadronamiento? Uh, will not be asked for that. It shouldn't be asked for that, okay? Okay, following question, I'm looking forward. Um, I am a 70 years old US citizen. I plan to immigrate to Spain next year in 2023 and become tax resident in Spain uh, for 2023. Well, um, yeah. Jerry, in this case, if you, uh, become resident in Spain after the after the first of July. You will not be tax resident in Spain for that year. If you become the first semester, it's a presumption that you will be more than one eighty days. Jerry, think about that. This figure, one hundred and eighty days. If you live in Spain more than that, then you will be tax resident. So if you come in the second semester that year, you will not be tax resident. Mm -hmm. Okay. Will my U.S. Social Security benefits be taxed in Spain? Okay. Yes, but you will be. We will be deducting in Spain the taxes that you have paid accordingly to the social security in the US, okay? So you will be paying the taxes as a social security in the US, but whenever we prepare all the worldwide income in Spain, which will be included the social security, also we will deduct accordingly to the tax to be paid in Spain, we will deduct the taxes that you have already paid as a social security in the US, okay? Okay, uh, following question, do I need 
to be empadronada. So in the padron, do I need to be in the padron to open a Spanish bank account? No, okay, it's not. It, is, it shouldn't be applied for that in a bank. It's not needed. Mm -hmm. Okay, following question. I'm now officially a tax resident in Murcia. I think this is from, uh, sorry about, I don't remember their names. I don't see the names. And Dave. I think it's mm -hmm. Dave. Th th I thank you, Dave. Dave. Thank you, Dave, for the question. I'm now officially tax resident in Murcia and about to renew my non-lucrative visa for the first time. So I understand, Dave, that you have applied for the first year and then you're gonna apply for the following two years. Just one question. My Spanish uh, tax advisor says that Athena needs to see my two UK bank accounts statement for six months, which should be a standard. However, my dealings, okay. It looks like that your bank is not, uh, is not a standard because you obtain all these documents electronically. I will not be reading all, everything on the question. So I can assume that Okay, good question, because we, we have also this, this kind of situations where... Um, um, Pedro, sorry, who's yeah. asking for that, Pedro? I think it's Dave, it says Dave, yeah? No, no, what I'm saying, he said that uh, two UK bank statement for six well, months, correct? Is, it says who's that, asking for that? He says the tax advisor says that Hacienda... Yeah? Um, you, know, know. you know what uh, I think, uh, Pedro, uh, it is? Yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I think it is? It's probably to register yourself as tax resident. They want to make sure that you've been living in Spain. You have utility bills, water, electric, etc., And they want to have a copy of your six months bank statements to yeah. know that you've been living in Spain. I think that's the reason. It is. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, obviously one of the requirements also is to show that you have financial means. Obviously the UK bank statements for the last six months, it shows that you have enough money Obviously, it will be showing you that you uh, have been in Spain, uh, like um, electric uh, water, and you have maybe spent some. But it shows financial means absolutely for the following two years. Um, I didn't say the, the, the figure, the minimum figure uh, at the beginning. It's uh, for one person is 27,000 euros, and finally, family member, 7,000 euros. Um, but normally, I mean, these uh, bank statements are given electronically, do not need any stamp. Maybe it's just a matter of proof, or maybe it's just not, do not believe on that. But, and um, uh, uh, Ignacio, and also what you say about the, this uh, electronic, uh, um, electricity and water bills uh, is, is with you are, yeah, that's right. I understand. Um, but, I mean, uh, we need to understand why, but in general terms here, Dave, they've been asking for you to prove, before, let's put it this way. When you come to Spain, you get, I'm not sure if it's your case, but you got your non-lucrative visa. You came to Spain, you've got your TIE, right? And then you need to register through the tax office. Tax office will not be willing to register there unless you prove you've been living in Spain for more than six months. That's a general requirement that you will not put you into the system, right? So it is my understanding what they want is for you to print out, um, the the pay slips basically the bank statements get stamped from the bank i mean if you've got your bank here in spain they can stamp it if it's as you said electronically i think that will be difficult but just do a print out of six months um for them to say but i think the reason what they're doing is because they want to make sure that you've been living in spain isn't it pedro mm -hmm. that's right that's right that, that's, okay. that's my understanding and that's how yeah. we've done it with different clients here today Right, let's move on with Michael here. With We're considering leaving uh, Spain and moving okay. to Portugal mm -hmm. for, tax, for tax benefits and mm -hmm. to cash in our pensions. Well, basically, this is one of the situations that you could put yourself into a non-resident picture whenever you want. After we arrive there, when, when do we stop being tax resident in Spain and start paying our taxes in Portugal? Is there a preferable month to leave Spain? Right. Um, right. Well, the key of the case for tax purposes, not for immigration, you need to stay. Um, obviously, if you start from the 1st of January, because the taxes in Spain here, Michael, it starts from the 1st of January to the 31st of December. If you live first on the first semester of the year, then you will not be more than 183 days. Um, obviously, make sure you instruct your, your lawyer, your accountant to disconnect you from the system. Uh, and they might ask you, um, I don't know if you have a property in Spain, you will have to put yourself as a non-resident. Very important to deregister here and get a tax resident in a different country, okay? Um, 
right? You could still uh, leave, uh, but, but the key of the case, you need to spend less than 183 days of a calendar year, Michael. Right, Pedro, shall we go uh, with uh, Ross? Okay, let's it? go to the following um, question is, um, Ross, uh, when, when you get, sorry, I have a dog here in the, at home, so I'm not like if someone is barking. Okay, let's go to Ross. Um, uh, when you get you to talking about tax requirements for residents, I would like to know how to register with the tax authorities. Please can uh, and can it be done online? Yes, we do it online. That's 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 correct, Ross. Thank you, Ross, for the question. Anyway, but it's important that we do it online. It's very important. Right. Um, right. To, uh, yeah. Carry on, Pedro. Okay, let's go Jane. for the following one. If you could. Um, we have Jane. One question from Jane. From Jane. Let me just take it. Uh, Okay, Jane. Okay, uh, thank you, Jane, for the question. I mean, hello, I live, I live in Spain and I'm employed by a company in the UK and I am on the pay, their payroll. If I take an extra free, freelance work, do I need to register as autonomous? The answer is yes, you should be inscribed and, and registered as autonomous in Spain. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, regarding right. um, the Tatia. question I can see is from Tatia, it's what documents uh, exactly do I need to show Spanish authorities for the empadronamiento. Um, it says that, it, that you already have a no lucrative visa. We have we have some video, well, we have video videos about probably everything that we are saying right now. But I remember, I don't know, Ignacio, if we could include a link, or Stephanie, we yeah. can include a link of this video uh, where we explain about, about this, about um, documents that we need for empadronamiento. I think it's a video okay. that was made by Stephanie. So we, we, we could okay. uh, link uh, this video. Okay, and we're gonna I, try. If if by any reason we don't get it, um, um, mm -hmm. right? Uh, if you go into a website, uh, you could go into blog, and what, once you go into our blog, you will see all these articles that will try to copy and paste, especially dual taxation treaties. Mm -hmm. There is a mixture between our blog and the website. There is a lot, a lot of information. We try to be general, so it covers general ideas. Okay, um, but in case right. that you are, in case that, uh, that you have already bought a property, you will have to obviously need to show a copy of a deed, a copy passport, of a passport, and an envelope, yeah. and the last electric water bills, electric. And water bills, and the last council tax. Mm -hmm. And that is just information about land registry, which is a copy um, land registry information, which is not as simple, we call it not as simple, which is a property registry info. Uh, it, it will one. depend, and, Pedro, on the town hall, how street they are. Yeah, but basically, yeah, exactly. they want to know that you are, you've got ties with that property or you've got rental contract tax. Uh, and if you uh, you are with a rental contract, obviously uh, the contract, and it it is important in the contract it says that you're authorized by the landlord to be inscribed in the in the padron. It's important. It's a clause that we we always insist on on, on including, obviously, an identification number of the uh, landlord, and obviously the electric bills, water bills, and council tax. Exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go for the following one. Uh, Ignacio. Yep. I'm Spanish. Okay, Alan is asking here. Uh, he says he's a Spanish resident, uh, main resident in Spain. He gifted his share uh, of his UK property to his wife, who's in the UK resident, as part of a divorce settlement. I understand that he, the divorce would take, took place in the UK. I received no cash or consideration whatsoever. Um, the financial arrangement has not been ratified by UK court and is in agreement between both parties and fiscal residents. Uh, and I understand that the Spanish tax authorities would still see this as a capital gain. As, um, as there was no capital gain per se, I believe that there, there are no monies owed to the Spanish tax man. That's correct. Yeah. Well, yeah. Go on, yeah. Pedro. No, but obviously this is it's an important question, Alan. Uh, when someone wants to give a gift to someone else, obviously um, there are some taxes included in the gift in case the, the, um, the, who is receiving is a resident in Spain, but obviously whoever is giving this gift um, may get a capital gain in case that, as Ignacio said, um, uh, is regarding the value. If you, for example, you buy a, uh, um, a, a property of 100,000 euros and then you make a gift and you put in a gift that this property is valued 200,000 euros, you are getting a gain. Mm? So be aware about this gain mm? because it will be in, in the tax uh, return, in the tax income, income tax declaration, uh, that gain, that capital gain that you may get just giving a gift. Mm? 
But having said that, you, I can read that you say, I gift my share of my UK property to my wife, who is a UK resident and as part of our divorce settlement. Okay, if, it's a, if it is a divorce settlement, is different as a gift. So I don't yeah. understand I, I, if yeah. it were a divorce element, then it's part of the settlement and that's not taxed. And in, 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 I mean, in, I would say in, in any case, um, or in most of the cases, but if it's a gift, as a gift, as a, as a gift, uh, as a, like the same as we could get, we could better like an inheritance. It, but it's not then, a gift, Pedro, is it? Because it's a settlement from the UK. It, 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 it looks like it's a settlement. So if it's a settlement, it shouldn't be it's a winding up. problem. Mm. And to make a gift, obviously, um, it is something that uh, needs to be done correctly. But um, Alan, I will uh, suggest you to send us an email and, and let's try to have a private conversation, a video conference and, and go through this information that you are giving right. because maybe it's not, it's not as, as, as we can read or maybe it's, it, we, are, we have some misunderstandings. But if it's a divorce settlement, it's, it's different. Mm. Mm. Right. Uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure, Guillermo, who's asking this question, if I obtain a golden visa, can I import my personal goods even if I'm not a tax resident under 183 days? I think Gordon, Gordon made, um, you, you could always bring it here, Gordon, all your belongings, but uh, if you are not a tax resident and you're not gonna become uh, a, a fiscal resident, you will have to pay all the customs taxes, um, right? you wouldn't be exempt. Now, for residents, um, I don't know if, if Guillermo wants to add something else. Uh, I think you will be exempt for a period of time. I think it is, you need to do it within, I'm not sure if two or three months, I will, I will double check with Guillermo. Okay, let's move on, Pedro, because- um, Okay, following questions. Um, let's read, uh, let me just, because I'm a little bit- um, I think, I think we are now on, um, right, let's, let's jump into the, the, the second chat here we have. Um, yes, uh, Ross was asking, how do I register with the tax authorities to submit a form? Well, I think we did cover that, Ross. Uh, you need to register the first time, given six months, bank statements, water, electric, contract to prove that you've been living in Spain more than six months. Once you're in the system, then uh, you'll be tax raising. Other option you have is to submit it the first year that you're a tax, tax raising in Spain. Let's say this year you are 2022, more than six months in Spain. Therefore, in 2023, April until June, don't forget this date, you'll have to submit Spanish taxes. We didn't cover the 720, which covers from January to uh, a in March, okay. So thirty first of to, March. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for you to and uh, you can read it in the blog. What is Modelo seven twenty? Is a worldwide assets declaration. Is only informative. Doesn't mean you paying taxes, but it proves um, it shows to the taxman that this is the information that you have. Right. Um, so from January to March seven twenty. From April to June, income and wealth tax. Now. For non-resident tax payers who've got a property and assets in Spain, you'll have to do it from January to December of the following year. So this year, you will lodge it the following year. Both of them are self-assessment. Okay. Right. Uh, let's move on, Pedro. Um, Let's let's okay. Um, let's um, let's I check. See, but let, let me just yeah, yes, check. It says um, uh, Gavin. It says thank you, Gavin, for the question. With a no look at the visa, can you rent out an apartment which is separated from my house? Yes. I mean, obviously, you may have a house. You may uh, are renting it, or maybe you just don't want to live in that house. You want to live in a different place, and you want to uh, uh, apply for no look at the visa in a different place. And it, as I, we said, in no look at the visa. Uh, you don't have to have an investment. I mean, obviously you have to have a place to live. Obviously you can rent a different place and say that this is gonna be your residence and the address. Perfect. Okay. Um, right. Richard um, uh, has a question as well. We have a question from uh, York, UK, where from uh, Fuente I've got one here, Pedro, from Richard. Uh, from he Scotland. Says, uh, Hi, can capital losses on stocks and shares be carried, carried forward? If yes, how long can they be uh, carry out forward, can the, lose, the losses 
be yeah. set against a gain on property disposal, Pedro? Yeah, I mean, this can be compensated in, uh, with the gains in the following four years. Mm -hmm. That's, uh, that's uh, uh, the answer, really, in general answers. Uh, actions with actions is where, I mean, can be compensated uh, in the following four years. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's move on. Um, Right, um, uh, we've got here some some questions. There are, there are a lot. I mean, just read. There are a lot of yes, questions. Uh, there are, uh, I would say, dozens of maybe. Right. Okay. Um, I'm I'm yeah. going to try to share here, Pedro, the dual taxation. Okay. Well, read, read, read. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I'm. I'm well, what I'm going to say, if you go into our blog, you will see dual taxation agreement between Spain. Um, the US, UK, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You go into the blog, then go into categories and just click taxes, right? And then you have a vast amount of information that we we try to cover for you. Okay, this is always general information, and but if you want it specific, we could always organize video conference, even though you're far away from um, in your home country, or if you're not able to come. I'm okay, let, me, let me answer. Them. Let me answer. Let me answer one question from Chris. Thank you, Chris. He says, "Does the five hundred thousand euros investment include the ten percent fee, the equivalent of the UK's stamp duty?" Okay, the Golden Visa is a minimum investment five hundred thousand euros as an investment. So imagine that property, one property that you have to invest, is that you need to show that you have paid that amount in this case to the seller, excluding. Any tax, any notary fees, any register fees, any solicitor fees, um, any, any stamp duty fees in case it's a new property. So it is 500,000 euros excluding. Apart from that, you have to pay transmission tax or value -add tax or a stamp tax also included. Uh, notary fees, property registry fees, um, a lawyer's fees. I mean, that's excluded. So will be obviously that 500,000 euros plus um, X percent. But we always say between 10, 11, 12, depending on the area or region in Spain. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. okay, I did share Pedro, the dual taxation treaty made, made it simple, okay, with the US and Spain, but you'll be able to find a lot of information as well about topics, for example, capital gain tax. This is a very important topic to talk, to do yourself, your, your tax planning. A lot of you have properties abroad, you're coming over here and you have questions about when, can I sell my property? How do I sell my property, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, is there anything else, Pedro, here we're running out well, of time? Well, uh, I don't know if we answer one. I mean, I'm reading right now from Richard. Thank you, Richard, for, for the question. Yes, says, I mean, obviously we, we can see that I the did. tax calendar in Spain. Is, oh, you did, okay. We can yeah. the tax calendar I did cover Spanish. Richard. Okay. And um, right, um, Right, uh, Enrique is saying, how much do we charge to do the service? Well, it depends on the service Enrique that will have to offer to you, whether it's a tax simulation, whether it's just a general consultation. Um, so if you contact our secretary, depending on, on the service you required, we could give you the price for the hour consultation. Okay, um, I think Pedro, we cover everything. Uh, I'm, if by any reason we didn't cover any, uh, we could just try to um, do it again in another webinar. Uh, we try to cover most of the questions in this hour. I, I think it was very intensive, Pedro. Yeah, uh, I think mm, Guillermo is saying there is another one here. Mm, mm. Do we have anything here? I think can you address. I the think. I think. Yeah, I think we have covered. Uh, I mean, obviously yeah. there are some other many many questions that. Uh, well, next time we could cover more more time in order to. Mm. If any one of you we have an answer, which I can see that there are some of you, some of you, please send us by email, and we will try to identify. Uh, and obviously, we will try to answer you and write. You know, have a video conference with you in order to, to 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 answer you. Um, right. This is this topic, obviously, the immigration, obviously, is a topic that is, is, is uh, I would say it's more straightforward in many cases. Obviously, it has some complexities in many cases also. But the tax scenario that um, comes after you get residency or non-residency, in case that you make an investment, is something that is, is important to, to prevent and now. Mm -hmm. Right, we're gonna give you here our email address. I know we're very busy and we are not easy to get back to you. 
uh, with an email. I always recommend you to contact uh, info secretary, so she will be faster to organize in the appointments if, in case it's necessary. I ask you as well uh, to, to send us the questions that probably are interesting for you to do tax planning, because the most important thing is to, to, to get the stress out of your chest, obviously, not to have the stress, know the answer in advance, do tax planning, always seek independent advice. I always recommend you because I'm very happy and I'm sure Pedro has the same experience every, on a daily basis when we help clients uh, with a big problem, big question, big issue, you save a lot of stress, time and money, right? And instead of doing the other way around, instead of committing a mistake, doing a mistake, and then you're falling into a trap that is very difficult for us to, exactly. to help. It's frustrating for us not to be able to help when you come and it's too late. So that's exactly. why... Mm. Yeah, and we 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 obviously been in many many uh, clients or many uh, p uh, this time uh, um, people that want to come uh, become residents in Spain or or are residents in Spain at this time. Obviously, they make one question, but obviously we like to have appointments. We like to have a personal appointment or a video, video conference, and we check. Uh, we try to check up absolutely everything because uh, uh, people we do not. I mean, do not have all the questions, and maybe some information as, is is missed. For example, you already said about the seven twenty. It's something that needs to be done. It's something about it's important to have it. What about the wealth tax? Obviously, I, I think I read some question about Madrid, but in Valencia community. At this time, it's, a, it's compulsory. You need to do it. You need to understand how it works and what would be the, the base to, to be taxed. And Andalusia, in this case, right now, it's been re eliminated. So is there, there are many, many issues and situations that people do not have a question because they don't know it. But obviously, it's important to, to revise, plan, uh, what uh, with us or with uh, other tax advisors in order to check that, uh, obviously, the situation, whenever it becomes resident or whoever is be already became resident, is, is okay. Mm -hmm. Right, and we're gonna, I mean, as, as you could even try our, uh, we did create, I probably, you know, uh, if you go into our website, there is Alexa, you could ask Alexa uh, to make question. We did upload a hundred questions, questions and answer, uh, and I encourage you to practice and, and see how, how she goes with it, okay? I'm gonna pass over to Juan Fran, he's gonna show you, and he's gonna fly a little bit around Spain to show you a little bit. And uh, I thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you for being there. And we will be seeing you in two weeks' time. Please carry on sending questions. We'll be able to answer within one hour of time. If you miss the webinar, you will be recorded in the website. I just posted the link, uh, live TV. And you have many, many topics if you did not attend the other webinars as well. OK? Over to you, Juan Fran. Thank you very much. I'm Pedro. See you soon. Thank you. How to buy a house in Spain as a foreigner. To buy a property in Spain in accordance with the legislation, the first step is to check the legal situation. What taxes do foreigners pay in Spain? In total, there are five Spanish taxes that every foreigner is obliged to pay. One. How are inheritances regulated in Spain? Inheritance tax is a progressive tax. Where to apply for the Golden Visa? The first thing you should do is go to the Spanish consulate in the country where you live. There you can request all the necessary documentation to obtain it. can't stop thinking about it. That hidden cove, just for you. That little hideaway in the mountains. Or that beautiful postcard town. Dreaming about enjoying the fresh air again. Feeling the sun on your skin. Exploring walking. Traveler, there is no path. Paths are made by walking.
Never stop dreaming. Spain will wait.